Good morning, everybody. Thank you for, uh, for all the media for coming and all the fans here. Uh, World Series of 59, uh, we've been putting on this card for a long time, and uh, it was a lot of great matchups. Uh, before the even this fight happened, to make the fight happen, uh, we have uh, Josh Berkman fighting Tyler Stinson. Uh, we know how tough Josh Berkman is, and he was on a great run. Uh, we have Tyler Stinson. Uh, you know, uh, we, we know this guy is coming for blood, and I think this is going to be a fight of the night. Uh, that's what I predict. And we'll also have uh, Yushu Nakami making his comeback uh, versus Salazar. Uh, this should be a great matchup. And we have two title fights. Uh, Magic Marlon Marias uh, versus uh, Josh Rathenhaus. Um, I believe Mar uh, Marlon won the best 135 pounder in the world. And, uh, I spied a really, really tough guy. A lot of people overlooking him. I believe uh, it's going to be a tough fight. I don't think he's going to be walking apart from Marlon. I think it's going to be a great fight. Uh, it's going to be a very, very technical fight. And, uh, and uh, I can see this fight being in the first round or go five round fights. Uh, and her main event, uh, 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 Mr. Marco Harris, uh, a lot of guys out there. Uh, didn't really want to fight him. A lot of people didn't want to give him the chance. World says to fight him right away. Uh, we think he is one of the best 170 pounder in the world. Um, you don't know what to expect from the guy. The guy is a, is a monster, and, uh, and uh, he's one of the scariest guys in MMA. But on the same note, uh, uh, Steve Carroll, uh, he's the champ. You know, uh, I think uh, a lot of the odd maker out there have it wrong. Uh, I believe he's the favorite in this fight. Uh, with Samar Paharas coming to his house, he has to prove he can beat the champ. Uh, Steve Carroll, uh, he's not the same guy as the guy saw three, four years ago. He's a, he's a new champ. He has no blood in him. He has no training partner, no camp. Uh, I believe he is the favorite for this fight. Uh, and, and I'm, I'm interested. I'm, I can't wait. As a fan, I'm going to uh, have the best seat in the house. And I'm going to try to watch this fight. And it's going to be an exciting uh, night of fight. Uh, thank you again for all the media and all the fans, and uh, I introduce you to my brother, Ray Safa. Thank you, buddy. And uh, of course, first of all, I want to thank everybody for taking the time to be here at the media. I want to thank NBC Sports Network, the Hard Rock Hotel Casino, um, speaking of the Ducati uh, giveaway, if you uh, how you win is that you got to download this app on your phone and uh, watch, tune in to watch which is a fighting and win a Ducati, $20,000 bike. So that's great. Uh, Ali's on the, obviously the introduction to our fighters. Here's the funny thing that you never hear much of. Ali would be great if you turn your phone off. Um, <laughs> anyhow, uh, Josh Riddinghouse is going to be uh, facing, you know, uh, Martin Reyes for the in our world, um, that's what we're talking about. And the funny thing about this kid is that it's spring break, so everybody's on the beach hanging out, and this kid's fighting for a world title. That's truly amazing. Uh, so, you know, I've never heard that throughout my career, I've never heard that before, so that's a great story. Um, and then, uh, worldwide, you can watch We're Just Fighting Nine on NBCSports.com. That's worldwide. Uh, so, which is Great news for us, and uh, obviously we'll hand it over back to Ron. And uh, anybody that got, got questions for the guys, uh, go ahead. Thank you. Real quick, some more housekeeping. We want to let you know the weigh-in tomorrow. Doors it will be at final here at the Hard Rock, just down the hallway a little ways. Doors open at 2 o'clock, weigh-in begins at 3 o'clock. That will be streamed live also on WSOF.com. And Ray mentioned one of the great things is having these fights, the fights themselves, streamed worldwide on NBC Sports. Uh, go to their website to be able to watch the fights. The undercard begins here on Saturday. First fight, 4 o'clock Pacific time, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Doors will open at 3.30 Pacific time. Also, the main events on NBC Sports Network begin at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time for the main event and some, some great fights that we've got in store here. So uh, we've got a microphone that we can take around. Danny's got the microphone over there to ask some questions. I'm going to start it off asking Josh um, right off the bat, taking on Tyler Stenson over here. It's going to be a great matchup between you two guys, two great brawlers, fighters. 
Um, excellent both of you at your craft. This, this fight, though, you're coming back to a place where last year you had one of the premier moments in all of MMA in your, in your 41 seconds, uh, the, the, the guillotine that you performed at that time. Uh, get, run back on that a little bit and your thoughts about being back here in Las Vegas at the Hard Rock where you have lost before, won before, and now yeah. another fight. You know, this is my uh, fifth fight here at the Hard Rock. You know, so uh, I, I'm comfortable here. You know, I lost once to John Fitch. I had a chance to uh, redeem that loss last year. So, you know, I'm just excited to be a part of uh, all that. Now you guys can hear me, huh? Microphone's on. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm just excited to be a part of this card. World Series Fight at Nine, you know, and how much the, uh, the show's grown, you know, just the talent. I'm mean, sitting next to Okami. And, you know, it's just, it's nice to see this show grow. It's nice to see everything about the show growing, sponsorships, and, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's come a long way from going to fish spot and just, you know, a few short shows. So, um, again, I'm just excited to be a part of it. Um, and then, you know, to be able to fight Tyler Stinson. He poses a, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, he's got some of the best hands of anybody I've faced in my 40 fights. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to that challenge and, uh, you know, just competing against him on Saturday night. All right, thanks, Josh. Okay, Danny, you've got a microphone there. If you raise your hand, please introduce uh, who you are, who you're affiliated with, and fire away with some questions here. Get some great fighters up here that are ready to answer anything and everything you've got. Spencer Lazar here. Josh, for you, um, taking on a guy like, like Tyler, he's got a great hand. So talk about that matchup, but also having uh, Steve Carl, you know, in a title fight on, on the card as well. What does that mean in terms of getting this win and hopefully getting in line for that goal? Right. Um, well, you know, I mean, I got a new, uh, you know, this fight with uh, Stinson, you know, as soon as they announced it. Um, I didn't really know who he was until he fought the answer the fight. And, you know, as watching him and in his fights and stuff, he's got very, very good hands and he's got a well rounded game. And it's going to test me um, coming off that loss with Steve Carr. You know, um, watching, you know, Steve um, get a chance to defend his belt, it has made me, you know, just very hungry. You know, coming off a loss to him, it, it changed the way that I was doing certain things. You know, as a loss should, I had lost creates some adversity, and I think I was really comfortable um, in the win streak that I had. And I wasn't maybe doing the things that I needed to do, push myself in the right way. So, you know, I think this fight with Stinson, you know, would prove that I just had an off night, and it would put me right back in the hunt for Steve Collins Bell. And for Steve, the champion here, um, talk about your preparation for a guy like Bruce Mar. Uh, I know you're confident in your ground game as well as uh, everywhere, but talk about preparing for a guy like that. Um, I kind of prepare for everybody a little bit the same way. Obviously, I work my ground game, prepare for who's on, but uh, I'm not going to beat him at his game. I'm going to beat him at mine. So I was in the gym working on me like I always do. And I'm ready for Saturday night. It's going to be the heck of a fight. Well, how do you prepare for something like that with, with the leg lock and stuff? Is that something you're, you're, you've worked on a lot? I mean, you, you have a black belt, right? I have no belt. That bill. Yeah, that bill. That bill. And the man weight division here. Um, talk about now fighting for the title. So happy and, <clears throat> I'm so happy, you know, to have the opportunity to be fighting for the first World Series of fighting Ben and belt. And see the organization growing and myself as a fighter. And I'm learning each fight, and I went back to the gym, training with my training partners, Ricardo Almeida, Mark, Frankie, learning every day, and I can't wait for Saturday to prove that I'm, I'm the 135 pound champion. George Garcia with MMAJunkie.com. Question for Josh. Josh, you've been taking it like a champ, taking it in stride, you know, that last loss that you had because you were on such a trajectory. But now that you sit next to Steve and you see the belt, you know, what kind of fire does that drive you to get past not only Tyler, but you know, aim for that belt once again? You know, even now. Uh, Can we have you move up a little, Josh, get the mic a little closer to you? You know, with it's not even necessarily being about the belt. I think, uh, you know, for all of us, we would be so competitive. And once I got past the, uh, you know, the belt and the title loss, which was pretty fast, you know, I got over that, it was more just losing. I don't like to lose. And I think that I always come back off my losses um, as a better martial artist and, and a better person too. You know, and 
this was probably one of the toughest losses of my career, but I think it's also going to have like the greatest change in me as a mixed martial artist. So, you know, it wasn't necessarily about losing the belt or the things that come along with that. It was just, you know, just the fact that I lost. But that adversity made me change so many things about the way that I go about my training, and I think that I'm better now for the loss than I, you know, was if I would have kept my winning streak. You know, so. Um, that's you know really what this fight is about for me is just coming back and proving myself that I'm better than I ever been. Can you give us an example of what you changed up in training? I mean, you know, so for me, I have you know herniated disc in my neck and it caused me a lot of problems. That's that's why I take a year off after the UFC and then try to figure out whether I can come back as a fighter or not. And uh, you know, it, for two years, you know, I, I did very little bit, little wrestling. I did no 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 jujitsu. I would only be a gi and I'd be training off my back. And you know, with my background being a wrestler, um, I couldn't wrestle. You know, so I had to. You know, after that fight with Steve, you know, I realized that you know, it, I I've got to take my wrestling more serious. I've got to take my my top rating, my game, and my ground more serious. I can't just knock everybody out. So I just, you know, stand up training and for the most part and get into clinch and that was how I trained. Um, but there was a point in the fight where I fought Steve Carl and I had him mounted at the end of the, I think it was the first or second round, second round maybe. And there were like 10, 15 seconds left and I just let him push me off of me. And I jumped up and I'm okay with standing up even though I had a full mount. And, you know, just watching things in, in my fights where I just let guys out of positions where I used to really dominate fights. I think that's one of the biggest changes that um, there will be. I, would, I, you know, I started wrestling again. I figured out a way that I could wrestle and keep healthy. And you know, if if I have to go to the ground, you will see a much different style in the way that I compete on the ground compared to how I had in my last ten fights. My next question is for Marlon. Uh, Marlon, you fought for the Ring of Combat for a belt. You came up short that night. Uh, are belts your motivation? Like, are you looking to maybe erase that by winning, you know, another coveted belt out there? Yeah, of course. We don't want to have a belt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my chance, and of course, I'm so motivated to get the belt. This is for Ray. Uh, the uh, the main the main bout, the championship at ultimate. Well, Harris came, comes over to the organization, joins it, and uh, he's given a title shot. Just, you know, it's, it's hard, difficult for some people to kind of uh, digest that. How, how, did, how did you think that? Well, um, I don't think it's that hard to digest at all. I mean, the guy's uh, record and the people who he has fought uh, speaks for itself. He's fought with some of the best and the best in the world. and. Um, he didn't get cut from UFC because he lost. He got cut from UFC because of a certain uh, ha submission that he held too long. So they say. But that being said, it doesn't take away the fact that Husma Paharas is one of the best fighters in the world in this division. Um, and I also want to touch on that too because a lot of people are, in my opinion, are overlooking Steve Carr. Steve Carr, sometimes, like I've said in many interviews, that belt there, that strap there, me being a fighter, I understand what it feels like to be a champ. I know what it's like when I got that strap around my waist. So, that being said, don't sleep on Steve Carl because Steve Carl is going to bring a uh, couple Saturday night. Question over here. Hi. Hi. Heidi Fang with MMA Fight Corner. My first question is for Steve Carl, based on what Ray said. Do you feel like your submission game is also being underrated? Um, Next to Paul Harris, it is obviously, but uh, you know it's not something I'm really thinking about. I'm gonna get out there, I'm gonna fight, and uh, if it presents itself, I'll go for a submission, no problem. And for Husamar, uh, basically, there's been so much going around this fight with what the last question was, and basically with the NSAC's random drug test. Is any of this affecting you mentally ahead of your fight? Um, 
No, actually, to the contrary, it was good because I got to adapt myself better here in Vegas, and um, I'm just very happy to be here and be happy to fight for the belt. That everything worked out for me. For Tyler, uh, you're pretty fired up about fighting Josh Bergman. We heard you on the conference call saying that, that maybe you're the backup plan in case anything doesn't pan out with the NSAC drug test. How excited are you to be in that position? Uh, <clears throat> I'm here to kick somebody's ass. Okay. <laughs> Bottom line, uh, name on the contract that I signed today with Seth Bergman. So you know, I'm I'm a kid from a small town in Kansas. I'm not even supposed to be here. So I'm, just, I'm that's basically it. You know, I'm very very happy to be here and and ready ready to fight. You know, uh, Ali said that he thinks it's good, it might be the fight of the night. Uh, that's good, but that means that you know he did something good too. I'm trying to dominate this fight. I don't know. Fight of the night, I'd rather take knockout of the night. And just to follow up on that, you said that you've been preparing quite a bit for Bergman, obviously, who's a season vet in the game. Uh, have you done anything specifically in training that uh, focus in on anything specific for him? Uh, no, we, we know what he's good at. Um, at this level, everybody's good at everything, you know, and uh, it, it's not something we don't we don't train for what they're going to do. We, we Trying for what I'm going to do, and uh, that's the only thing I can control. I can't control how he's going to come out and fight. You know, I got to come out and, and put put my moves, you know, first, and and that's basically it. You know, just just go. You know. And last question for me, uh, Yushin Okami. Uh, this is your first fight here with World Series of Fighting. You have a very game opponent in Sweatslog. I'm curious how you feel about this fight and making your debut with the World Series of Fighting. Chad Rappachar. 
Is that a fight or? No, it's going to be a, I'm going to be a real good fight and then, you know, and after that I can just give guys a lot of fight walk in, they have to earn it. Okay, thank you. Cool. I just wanted to ask Josh Rittenhouse here, uh, how do you feel about fighting for a title against Marlon Moraes, who's basically cleaned out most of the mental weight division here with the World Series of Fighting? Uh, I'm excited. Um, you know, fighting for a title is great, but at the end of the day, it's just about fighting the best in the world. And uh, like you said, Marlon's cleaned everybody out in the division, except for me, obviously. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I just want to fight the best, and he's one of the best, so that's what it's about. Thank you. And uh, for Slitz Lobar, Saba, I hope I'm saying my problem really. Uh, I wanted to ask you about fighting Okami. I mean, he's been very well known over the course of his career as one of the top fighters in the division. How do you uh, feel about fighting him? I have a lot of respect for him. Of course, he's a good sportsman with the team. I'm doing well, and as he's doing it on the ground, I got the respect to Yushin Okami, but I train very hard for this fight. I prepare on the ground, I prepare a stand of fighting. Depends how the fight is going to go. Any other questions? All right, thank you. We appreciate it. Again, I do want to mention real quick here. Uh, Weigh-ins tomorrow, 3 o'clock at final doors open at 2 o'clock. We're going to remove the podium here and get some stare-down pictures. You ready for that, guys? Yeah. Yeah. With that. Looking forward to some great fights again. Thank you very much for uh, being here. You got some great photos coming up here right now. And a one on one event will afterwards.
Lucia Marfilares fighting out of Brazil against Steve Carl, the champion, welterweight at 170 pounds. All right, fighters, thank you very much. All right, thank you guys. And the media, these guys will be available now for one-on-ones. We appreciate you all showing up here today.